So today we're going to talk about Trevor Bauer. If you don't know who Trevor Bauer is, he's a former MLB baseball player who lost his career over fake allegations, really. I did a video on this a few months back when it was first happening when this woman accused him of literally beating her during sex or sexually assaulting her. He was suspended from his team. He was let go from his MLB team. And then it turned out that everything she said was a lie. If you want to check out what I had to say in that video, check it out. Link is in the description down below. I'm also going to put it in the cards up here for you to check it out. Well, fast forward to today. Trevor Bauer is back in the news because this time one of his accusers is actually being indicted. Yes, you heard that right. A false accuser is actually being indicted for one. I'm actually shocked that this is actually happening. When this happened, the accuser decided that it would be a smart idea to actually do an interview and try and defend herself. She went on Sarah Gonzalez's The Blaze Show to defend the text that had come forward about her actually not being a victim, but being the predator in this situation. Here's a little bit of what that looked like. He says, another one from you to a friend, I'm going to his house Wednesday. I already have my hooks in. You know how I roll. With a screenshot in which you told him, tryouts don't scare me, Bauer. Pick a day and I am there. Here are some more after you and Trevor met up. Net worth is 51 million, to which your friend responds, bitch, you better secure that bag. Your text, need daddy to choke me out, being an absolute whore to try to get in on his 51 million. You say this wasn't a setup. How can you expect anyone to believe that? That's a great question. I really appreciate you having me on to even have this conversation. Um, obviously, there's a lot going on around this, so I really appreciate uh, people who are asking questions about it. Um, the first thing I want to say is, you know, I think that Trevor did this intentionally with the text messages and how he framed this video. Um, there's several things in it that are not correct. Um, and I just want to start out by saying, you know, those it's so valid for people to question those text messages. But the root of the problem here is that he is presenting this as one conversation when in reality he had thousands of message messages to choose from took those made it look sequential which it was not um there is no combined screenshot of those things going on one after the other and as i said last night as well um there's no text message that ever exists otherwise he would have you know put it out there uh combining you know anything about a setup uh through rough sex finances all in one. Those were handpicked and they were not, they were from multiple different conversations all before we met up. Um, and I, I think that the video in general doesn't even talk about what actually happened between us two, which is what would have come out during a, a jury trial. Um, you know, these were all messages that happened before. And then of course the video is so valid as well for people to ask questions about. Um, but I do think that that video was entirely misleading. He also references the uh, restraining order hearing, which people also have questions about. Um, he says that he was cleared of any wrongdoing, which is actually incorrect. Um, in our civil case, the judge had actually ruled that he had not been cleared of any wrongdoing. Um, and that was a federal court judge. Now, fast forward to today, Trevor Bohr is back in the news because, again, another woman had accused him of sexual assault. I can't believe I'm actually saying this, but she is being charged. She is being indicted on her crimes, on the fake allegations. We're going to watch this video by Trevor Bohr, and he's going to break down everything that's going on with this case. And then we're going to go ahead and give our own opinion. One of the women who accused me of sexual assault just got indicted for committing felony fraud against me. Imagine that. Now, let me catch up to speed. In the last three years, two women have taken legal action against me. Uh, Lindsay Hill started all this. You may remember her from this video. Yep, that's the original lady. That's the one that said she that he beat her up, uh, beat her in the body, and did all this stuff. And then she so conveniently had a video of her on her phone of them the next day after the deed where there was no visible physical abuse there was nothing going on and the text revealed that she was telling her friend that she was actually trying to get in on his money she wanted his money and so she sued him to try and get possibly a settlement and a payout as the girl who set me up and lied to the world in an attempt to take my money well today the only other one darcy adana Asimonu, has been criminally indicted for committing felony fraud against me and another man so now she's facing up to 16 years in prison. Her claims are even more absurd than Lindsay's were, so here's some of the details. 
We had one plain sexual encounter in December of 2020. Nothing that could be considered remotely rough. Uh, she initiated it, but don't take my word for it. Take hers. This is a picture and text message she sent me the next morning, explaining why she came on to me. And for months after... Alright, so the text say, I guess you smelled cocky and confident with slight stubble. Hmm, did I make that comment that your shoulders look broad and are, sh and are strong? My feminine lenses were on. Word, she repeatedly requested to sleep with me again. Uh, for example... Uh, hold on, let me pause this. I want to read this for you guys. Can I sleep with you, sad face? Me again. I just want to sleep next to you again. I will be very quiet, promise. And I will sleep though. In the morning, I'll have to leave and I will slip out without a blink. Uh, for example, this text... I'm not certain, but... Can I sleep over there later? I'm not certain if, but can I sleep there? It's peaceful for me. X from January 7th, 2021. So this, she seems like a female incel or a femcel. Like this is extreme. I mean, obviously she's not, but it's giving desperation. She wanted to be there so bad because what she wanted to do was not just sleep there. She wanted to sleep with him again, also to try and get in on his money because that's all these women do. But yo, that shit sucks that this guy back to back is dealing with this bullshit from two different women. And you know what sucks even worse for him? It sucks even worse that even though he has in a court of law proven to be innocent with proof, still hasn't gotten his job back from the MLB. Crazy to me. He now plays in Mexico for way less money because some women decided to lie on this man to try and get a settlement out of it. That is insane. At one point, she even requested a sample of my sperm so she could have my child whenever she wanted to in the future. Now, it's hard to keep track, but she's made at least four seven-figure demands over the last few years. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, let me get your sperm. Let, let, let's put it in a bottle so I can have your babies whenever I want. And what she means is she was going to have that baby right away and hook them for fucking child support. That shit is nuts that a woman would actually openly ask a man that she slept with once for his sperm so she can have a baby whenever she wanted, which means she was going to have the baby right away and get him for fucking child support. Yo, these women are fucking sick. I'm sure that this is going on a lot. Especially if you're an attractive woman who likes those kind of guys or you're an attractive guy who's got a lot of money, you know there's these women that are out there looking for you to do exactly this. There's a lot of women out there that actually make sleeping with rich men their job, sleeping with them and having their babies because then they know that they're going to live a certain lifestyle. So they do that on purpose. Uh, more than a year after the one time we slept together and only after Lindsay Hill made up her false allegations, Adana retained a lawyer. Uh, she then demanded $3.6 million and claimed I forced her to have an abortion, leaving her emotionally devastated and irretrievably damaged by it. But uh, here's the thing, she never had an abortion because she was never even pregnant and that's corroborated by her own medical records. When I refused to pay her the $3.6 million she was asking for, she made up a bogus sexual assault claim and filed a civil suit against me. In that version of her story, she claimed, for the first time by the way, uh, that there was non-consensual sex. But her texts from the next morning show what actually happened. Remember this text in which she explains why she came on to me? Uh, she also yep. claims that instead of an abortion, she actually had a miscarriage, but that's impossible of course because again, she was never even pregnant. Uh, we now have emails between her and the first two law firms that dropped her in which they acknowledge they never had any evidence to support her claims. That's crazy. That's crazy, man. So she actually retained some lawyers and when they asked her for, for proof, they straight up told her like, yo, we can't represent you because you have no proof. There's no case here. Um, one of them actually even told them, maybe you can find a different law firm with a different standard who would take up this case, but we're not going to do it. But they'll try to get my money anyway. I then shared an audio recording I have in which Adana contradicts her own claims and asks me for money. In the emails, her lawyers agreed that that's in- uh, Hi Adana, as your legal counsel, we have all agreed that the recording is detrimental to your case to the point that we will very likely not be able to continue representation of you on this matter. We are requesting a copy of the recording to verify authenticity. I know this is difficult news, but without medical records of your abortion and a recording like this, this is what we feel is insurmount insurmountable evidence and they inform Madonna that they can no longer represent her unless she can provide documentation or proof of her claims. And of course, she couldn't do that, so the law firm urged her to consult other law firms with different standards. Yeah. Now, Adana has filed more than 10 police reports claiming sexual assault or harassment against other men, including at least one other professional athlete. So she's a professional victim who's filing police reports on other men to get a bag out of them, to get some sort of settlement, to get some money. 
She's a professional cry bully. I want to say because she's an actual predator. This woman is a and I'm going to put up on the screen actually what she looks like just so that if you ever see my video and you ever come across this woman, just avoid her at all costs. If she comes on to you, avoid her at all costs. This is simply fucking insane that this woman is out here just coming on to men, sleeping with these men and then claiming that she's been sexually assaulted so that she can get some money out of it. And I'm assuming destroying the reputations of these men in the process. And these women don't care. And again, this just goes to show again, I don't agree with the red pill. I'm not for it whatsoever. But do you see why a lot of men turn to the red pill? It's shit like this. It's women ruining careers, ruining lives. You know how many men are probably in prison because of a false claim that women have made? You know how many men have lost their jobs because of, including Trevor Barr, because a woman made a false allegation against a man? Just an allegation. It doesn't even have to be proven true. The allegation is enough. That's the kind of world that we live in today, that an allegation is enough for you to lose your job. And then to top it off, you don't even get your job back once you prove you did nothing wrong. This guy is forever ruined based on the two fake allegations of two separate women just because they wanted some of his money. That's evil. But after the Scottsdale police completed their investigation into her claim against me, she's the one being indicted for felony fraud. And not just against me, against another man as well. Now, she made up bogus sexual assault claims and attempted to extort him too. And it gets worse. In my lawsuit against her, we subpoenaed a witness whom she knew for relevant documents to use in our case. And when she found out, she immediately made sexual assault claims against him too. Now, her oh, MO man. is clear. Lie to men to get their money, extort them if she must, and when they refuse to pay, stop paying or stop giving her what she wants, go to the police, accuse them of sexual assault, and file a civil suit against them to retaliate. And just so no one can say, well, he still has two other accusers, just because the first two are complete frauds doesn't mean the others are. Here's a couple facts about them. They both had lawyers first demand in excess of $3 million to not go public. Uh, in both cases, only after I refused to pay any sum of money did their lawyers make anonymous claims in the media. They both had the opportunity to file a criminal complaint against me. Neither of them did. They both had the opportunity to file a civil suit against me. Neither of them did. They both had the opportunity to participate in Lindsay Hill's civil suit against me. They could have even done so anonymously. They both refused. One of them even submitted a statement to the court stating that she never made public accusations against me. The other refused to participate so vehemently that Lindsay Hill took legal action against her trying to force her to participate. She still refused. So they both had the opportunity to testify under penalty of perjury. Neither of them did. One can only wonder why. Perhaps it's because all of their claims against me are lies. It's been two years since these women and their lawyers attempted to weaponize anonymous claims in the media against me to take my money. I addressed them at the time, and as far as I'm concerned, it's in the past. But if there comes a time in the future where I need to defend myself further, I will not hesitate to do so. Uh, for now, there's no reason to speak further on this topic, though, because outside of Adana, who's now been indicted with felony fraud, there are no claims against me, no ongoing investigations, and no outstanding lawsuits. At this point, I'm not sure what else I can possibly do to prove my innocence in all this, I did not do what I was accused of. And every institution that our society is entrusted to rule on issues like these, like courts, judges, law enforcement officers, prosecutors, they all agree with me. They've rejected every single claim made against me, even going as far as charging one of my accusers with a felony. If any evidence of any of these claims actually existed, I would have been charged, or at the very least arrested. But that never happened. What else do I have to do to prove that this entire situation has been a massive lie? This is insane. At what point do I get to go back to work and continue earning a living? You know, the sad reality of this is that he will most likely never go back to the MLB. Those women have effectively ruined this man's life. They have ruined his livelihood. They have taken away the thing that he has worked for all his life, which is baseball. Now he has to play in Mexico with third rate teams making third rate money. And all of it is because these women have decided the money was more important than the man's reputation. They don't care about his reputation. They don't care about what happens to him. They don't, they, all they wanted was the money. But at some point, man, Trevor got to just stop fucking with these women, man. Just keep it in your pants, bro, for a little while and just don't do shit, man. Just don't do shit. Don't do any, just go to the local bar 
And get you a girl that don't even know who you are, man. Start sleeping with those. Don't sleep with these professional fucking victim predators, man. Because that's what they are. They're predator victims. They'll fucking prey on you, make themselves a victim just to get money out of you. And it just goes to show men and young men in general, just be careful out here with these women, man. Just be careful out here with these women because especially if you got any kind of money because they will use that shit to trap you like a motherfucker. If you ain't got nothing, you ain't got to worry about it, but... Just saying, if you ever become famous, be on the lookout for these kind of women because it can happen to you too. I feel bad for Trevor, man, but I'm glad that she's finally, at least one of them, is finally getting what they deserve because this believe all women shit has gone too far and it has resulted in many men losing their careers over false allegations. But that's all I got for this video, guys. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Be sure to like, subscribe, hit that bell notification. Follow me on social media. The links are always in the description down below. And join the Discord. Link is also in the description. And I'll see you guys in the next video.